Greetings of the day all of you. I hope you all are doing good. So, in this video, we are going to learn about comparison of ratios. Comparison means that to tell which one is bigger or which one is smaller. We compare them by telling it whether it is bigger or whether it is smaller. Here, we are given the ratios and looking at the ratios, we have to tell which ratio is bigger or vice versa, which ratio is smaller. Alright, now how we are going to tell that? So, you all know already that ratios can be written as fractions, right? 2 is to 3. If a fraction is given, 2 is to 3. So, a ratio is given 2 is to 3. We can write it as fractions. That means 2 upon 3. So, to compare the ratios, first step is to write the ratios in the fractions. We will write the ratio in the form of fraction. And how are we comparing the fractions? If you all can recall, to compare the fractions, what we were doing? We were doing the cross multiplication method, right? We, were, we will cross multiply the product, whatever the product will come bigger, that fraction will be bigger. So in the same way, the whichever fraction is bigger, that ratio is greater. Alright? So let us learn the same concept through the Example question given in the exercise number 3. I am doing two parts C and D here. So it says which of the ratios is greater? We have to tell which ratio is greater. In C part it is given 45 is to 30. First ratio is 45 is to 30 or 35 is to 21. Alright. First step is to write the given ratios in the fractional form. 45 is to 30 will become 45 upon 30. 35 is to 21 will become 35 upon 21. Alright. Now next is to do the cross multiplication. That means the numerator of first fraction will be multiplied by the denominator of second fraction and the numerator of second fraction will be multiplied by the denominator of first fraction. That means 45 multiplied by 21, 35 multiplied by 30. One thing you have to keep in mind that is wherever the numerator is there, write that on the same side only. So if 45 is here, so 45 will be written here only and its multiplication 21 will come this side. 35 is on the right hand side, so write 35 here itself and 40 will come here. Alright, now multiply 45 and 21 and 35 and 30. Okay. So 45 into 21. Let us do it in the rough column. You can prepare a rough column in your notebook for doing rough calculation. 1 into 5, 5, 1 into 4, 4, cross 2, 5 is 10, 2, 2, 2, 4 is 8 plus 5, 9. It becomes 945. 35 into 30. 5 threes are 50, 3 threes are 9 plus 1, 10 and 1 zero. So here I got 945, here I got 1050. We can say that, we can directly tell that 1050 is greater than 945. So 1050 is the fraction, is the number of fraction will be 35 upon 21. That means 35 upon 21 is greater than 45 upon 30. If this fraction is bigger, that simply means this ratio is greater. That means 35 is to 21 will be greater than 45 is to 30. And you all know in the sign, the mouth is open towards the greater number. So, I hope it is clear as just you need to recall the concept of your fractions comparison. The way we were comparing the fractions by cross multiplication method. You will do the same 
steps here as well and in the last we will write it in the form of ratio all right let us see the b part as well it says 50 is to 70 or 40 is to 90 so again first step is to write 50 is to 70 in the fractional form and 40 is to 90 as well in the fractional form all right now the next step is to do the cross multiplication method that is 50 multiplied by 90 and 40 multiplied by 70 you all know with the numbers in the end zero we simply multiply the given digits and put the number of zeros which are there in the question so 5 into 9 45 and there are two zeros so write down two zeros 4 into 7 28 and two zeros 4500 2800. We can simply tell that 4500 is bigger. So if 4500 is bigger, 50 upon 70 is greater, and that 40 upon 90. If 50 upon 70 is greater, so which ratio is greater? 50 is to 70 is greater than 40 is. all right this is how we compare the ratios i hope this is clear to you all now the next topic is equivalent ratios so you already know ratios can be written as fractions and the whole concept is similar in the end so what we will do to find equivalent ratios first let us recall what the what is equivalent ratio equivalent means that in the end that the whole is being divided into same equal parts we can reduce the given fraction in the lowest term and if the values are coming same that means the numerators and the denominators are same they are said to be equivalent yes we were doing that now in the same way we are going to find the equivalent ratios as well the same method will be followed to find which we were following for finding the equivalent fractions this is the question number 2 it says find the equivalent ratios of the given ratios c part we are doing it is 36 is to 54 how we were finding equivalent fractions two methods were there either multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number or by dividing by the same common factor just one thing we have to keep in mind is that if we are multiplying we have to multiply by same number if we are dividing we have to divide by the same number so for division you already know that the numerator and denominator should have the common factor right if they are not having any common factor the next step will be multiplication only that fraction will only be multiplied to find its equivalent fraction now here it is 36 is to 54 that can be written in fractional form as 36 upon 54 there are two ways to do this either you can multiply 36 and 54 to find its equivalent ratio or the next step is by dividing we know 36 and 54 both are even numbers even numbers can be divided by Two. So let us divide to find its equivalent fraction. I am dividing thirty-six and fifty-four by two. Thirty-six divided by two, we will get eighteen. Fifty-four divided by two, we will get twenty-seven. So eighteen upon twenty-seven can be written in the ratio as eighteen is to twenty-seven. All right. We have to find more, so we have to find three. This till now we have only found one. Now thirty-six upon fifty-four. Here we have divided by two. In the next step, we can multiply also, but it should be by the same number. Now I am multiplying thirty-six and fifty-four by two. So thirty-six multiplied. 
divided by 2, 6, 2 is 12, 2, 3 is 6 plus 1, 7, and you will get 72. 54 multiplied by 2, you will get 108. So, the another equivalent fraction can emerge is 72 upon 108. This can be written in the ratio as 72 is to 108. Two ratios, two equivalent ratios we have found. We have to find one more. So, you can see that either now to find another equivalent fraction, either you can multiply it by 3, 4, 5 or any other number or you can divide also by their common factor. We know 36 and 54 factors will be, common factors will be 2 that we have done. 36 and 54 also comes in the table of 6, 9, 3. So there are so many common factors as well. So right now to find the equivalent fraction ratio of 36 is to 54, I am dividing now by 6. You will get 6 upon 9. So the another equivalent ratio is 6 is to 9. Here we have found the 3 equivalent ratios. We were supposed to find 3 equivalent ratios only. First is 18 is to 27. Second is 72 is to 108. Third is 6 is to 9. So I am trying here to tell, let you know that you can either multiply, you can either divide to find the equivalent ratio. Just one thing you have to keep in mind is that if you are multiplying, it should be multiplied by the same numbers. If you are dividing, it should be divided by the same numbers. And it is not necessary that you have to only multiply or you have to only divide. You can do any ways. Alright. Let us look at D part. D part is 48 is to 60. So first step is to write 48 is to 60 in the fractional form. That will be 48 upon 60. Again let us divide by 2. Both are even numbers. Both will be divisible by 2. So, their common factor will be 2. I am dividing it by 2. 48 divided by 2, I will get 24. 60 divided by 2, I will get 30. So, the fraction is 24 upon 30. But we have to find equivalent ratio. So, write this fraction in the ratio form. That means 24 is to 30. Now, 48 upon 60, we have to find second equivalent fraction. You can either multiply it by any number or divide also. We know 48 and 60 comes in the table of 6 as well, in the table of 3 also. So, let us divide it by 3 first. 48 divided by 3 will be 60, 60 divided by 3 will be 20. So, the another equivalent fraction is 16 upon 20. Write this in the form of ratio that is 16 is to 20. To find the third equivalent fraction ratio, I am dividing it by now 6. That I will get 6 eggs are this 48 and It is not necessary that you have to divide only. You can multiply even. Instead of dividing by 2, multiply by 2. Instead of dividing by 3, multiply by 3. Instead of dividing by 6, multiply by 6 also. But the thing is for division, I was saying that I have so many common factors. So I divided them to find the equivalent ratios. You can multiply even or you can divide also. It depends on you. Just you have to keep in mind that if you are multiplying, it should be multiplied by the same number. If you are dividing, it should be divided by the same common factor. Alright, I hope it is clear how to find the equivalent ratios of a given ratio. Thank you. Now, the next question is, fill in the boxes to find the 
equivalent ratio okay that means that the given ratios are equivalent just one number is missing so we have to find that missing number okay so it's question number 3 and i'm going c part it is 6 is to 7 is equal to 36 is to blank okay first step is every time whenever we are solving convert the ratio into fraction first that means 6 is to 7 will become 6 upon 7 is equal to 36 upon blank that means if there is equal to sign, this simply means the ratios are equivalent. Now you just simply need to know that by what number you will multiply 6 so that you get 36. Obviously if the number is becoming bigger, it is being multiplied. So 6 is multiplied by 6 to get 36. If you remember, if to find equivalent ratio, we are multiplying by the same numbers. The numerator and denominators are multiplied or divided by the same numbers. If we are multiplying here by 6, that simply means 7. It will also be multiplied by 6 only. So 7 into 6 is 42. So the missing number is 42. The ratio becomes 6 is to 7 is equal to 36 is to 42. The missing number we have found. Okay. Just one thing. You will write them in the fractional form. After writing them in the fractional form, check whether they are being multiplied or by divided. And if it is being multiplied, multiply numerator and denominator both by same number. If it is divided, divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. Okay, now D part. First step is to write it in the fractional form. 49 blank upon 49 is equal to 2 is to 7. Alright, that means we need to find this numerator. If its equivalent numerator is 2, the denominator here is 49 and its equivalent denominator is 7. If the number is decreased, here you can see 49 is decreased to 7. That means it is being divided. By what number will you divide 49 to get 7? By 7, 7, 7, 49, 49 divided by 7, you will get 7. That means denominator is being divided to get its equivalent fraction. So, in the numerator also you are supposed to divide only. Yes. Now, by what number will you divide? Or I can say that which number will be divided by 7 so that the answer becomes 2. The number is? 14. If I will divide 14 by 7, I will get 2. So the blank is 14. Now the ratio, the missing number is 14 is to 49 is equal to 2 is to 7. I hope you it is clear to you all how we can find the equivalent ratios or how we can find compare the given ratios. What you have to do is just write the ratios in the fractional form and follow the method of fractions. Alright, complete this much work in your notebooks as well. See you all, take care everyone.